Hi everyone, I'm Steve Brunton from the University of Washington, and this is a new video lecture series on the Fourier transform and wavelets. This uh, is gonna follow chapter two of our new book, Data-Driven Science and Engineering by myself and Nathan Kutz. Uh, and you can find all of the code and uh, lecture material online at databookuw.com. And you can also find it in the, the comments and the links below. Okay, so I'm really excited to talk about the Fourier transform because this is one of the most important and ubiquitous transformations in all of mathematical physics and engineering, okay? And if you go back through the history of science, most of our major breakthroughs started with a coordinate system or a coordinate transformation that made our world make more sense, that made physics simpler in some way. And so the Fourier transform is another coordinate transformation that is particularly useful for, uh, for representing data and uh, images, for representing the solution of partial differential equations. And I'm gonna walk you through all of the different, well, not all of, lots of the different uses of this Fourier transform, uh, kind of the mathematical theory of the Fourier transform, how to compute it uh, in MATLAB and in Python with the fast Fourier transform, the FFT. Uh, and we're also gonna talk about um, the history uh, and kind of how this was derived. So Fourier in the early 1800s derived the Fourier transform and the Fourier series in particular as a way of approximating solutions of partial differential equations. So he was particularly interested in the heat equation. So imagine that I have uh, some rectangular piece of metal and this has some temperature distribution, maybe U is a function of X and Y and time in two dimensions, U is the temperature everywhere in space and time then this would be governed by the heat equation, which is a partial differential equation, u sub t, the partial derivative of u with respect to time, is a positive constant uh, times the Laplacian operator of u. So this is the uh, second partial derivative of u with respect to x, plus the second partial derivative of u with respect to y in two dimensions. And so what Fourier did, he didn't just write down the Fourier transform for no reason. He discovered that the Fourier transform is a coordinate transformation that essentially diagonalizes this Laplacian operator in the heat equation. So what he showed was that this, uh, this operator, this Laplacian, has eigenvalues and eigenfunctions, just like other linear operators do, and the eigenfunctions are sines and cosines with a particular frequency uh, determined by the boundary conditions and the geometry of this, this object, uh, and the corresponding eigenvalues are those spatial frequencies. So Fourier derived the Fourier transform specifically to make the heat equation simpler by transforming it into an eigenvector eigenvalue coordinate system. Okay, and since then it's been used for all kinds of applications in uh, image compression and solving other partial differential equations. In fact, we've actually seen that the singular value decomposition from chapter one of our book can be thought of as a data-driven Fourier. So uh, SVD is kind of like a data-driven uh, extension of the fast Fourier transform or the FFT. Okay, so we've already seen coordinate transformations before in chapter one with the SVD. This is kind of a, a generalization of the FFT. And now we're gonna go back and talk about the more fundamental uh, and older and more ubiquitous Fourier transform. Okay, good. So the, the Fourier transform is also, I think, very important because it changed our, our view of mathematics in general. This idea that you can take an arbitrary function, I'll just draw uh, kind of a function here. So you can take an arbitrary function Let's just draw this kind of uh, pointy hat function. And you can approximate this by a sum of sines and cosines of increasing frequency. So if this function is defined on some domain, I can approximate it by a sum of sines and cosines of increasingly high frequency. So that's, that's one. Maybe now I say I'm gonna have a higher frequency uh, sign, something like that, and so on and so forth. And you can keep adding these up. It's gonna get a little harder for me to draw this, but I'll try, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this function you can approximate as a sum of increasingly high frequency sines and cosines. Okay, and so this idea of function approximation uh, is one of the really, really important aspects of the Fourier transform and of, of wavelets, okay? This 
laid the foundation for our understanding of function spaces like the Hilbert space, which was uh, pivotal in our understanding of quantum mechanics. This idea that these, or, these, these uh, sines and cosines in fact form an orthogonal basis for the space of possible functions. So uh, all of these kind of functions that I could draw can be represented in this basis of sines and cosines. So just like in a vector space, you might have your x and your y coordinates, which form a basis for two-dimensional vector space. Your sines and cosines form a basis for function space. Okay, so that was really important in this derivation and understanding of Hilbert spaces. Uh, which have been really, really foundational for our modern understanding of mathematical physics. Okay, so fast forward 200 years, now we have the fast Fourier transform. Okay, so now we have the fast Fourier transform. This was developed relatively recently. Okay, the fast Fourier transform or the FFT. This is how you compute a Fourier series efficiently on a computer. So this has been absolutely central in how we analyze and process data that we collect. So for example, audio sequences, images, videos, these are all compressed and represented efficiently using fast Fourier transforms. So pretty much all of our modern digital communication is built on the fast Fourier transform. You wouldn't be able to send pictures uh, or audio clips or really anything efficiently. We wouldn't be able to have satellite communication if it wasn't for the fast Fourier transform. So this really is one of the absolute most important algorithms uh, ever developed, and it's still important today, and I'm going to tell you all about it. So we're going to walk through uh, the fast Fourier transform, the Fourier series, the analytical Fourier transform and wavelets. We're going to code up examples of how to solve uh, partial differential equations in MATLAB, in Python. We're also going to use it for function approximation, for image compression, for audio compression, for denoising. So I'm really excited to tell you about this. This is going to be one of the most powerful tools in your arsenal, especially when you're working uh, with data. All right, thank you.